Okay children, now look at the electric circuit. So I already told you what is a circuit. Circuit means a path. So electric circuit, that means it is the path in which the electricity flow. So here we have two electrical components. One is an electric bulb, the other one is a cell. You know that the cell is the source. It is the source of electricity. The bulb is the load. That means which uses the electricity to glow. So if you wanted to make this bulb glow, you should supply electricity from battery to the bulb. So how do you do that? We need the help of a conductor to carry the electric charges from the battery, from the cell to the bulb. So what is a conductor? You can take wire as a conductor, right? A wire, a copper wire or an aluminum wire is a good conductor of electricity. So here we take a wire, connect the wire to one terminal of the bulb. The bulb has got two terminals. We have seen that in the previous part of this lesson. A bulb has got two terminals. So this is one terminal and this is the other terminal. So from the other end of the cell, one more wire is connected to the other terminal, other terminal of the bulb. So we made the connection. Now what happens? So the electricity, it flows in the conductor, in the wire and it reaches the terminal of the bulb and from the terminal, it flows through the filament of the bulb. When electricity flows through the filament of the bulb, the filament it glows and it emits light. Now the electricity is coming back through the conductor to the cell. So this is a closed circuit, this is a closed path. The path is closed. Only when the path is closed or only when the circuit is closed, only then we see the flow of electric charges. That means if the circuit is broken, that means I have disconnected the cell over here. Now there is no flow of electricity. You may think that, okay, this terminal of the cell is connected to this terminal of the bulb. So there will be some flow of charge in this part. It's wrong. If the circuit is broken at any place, at any point, then you don't find the flow of electric charges, right? So sometimes even though you connected the circuit, the bulb is not glowing. What might be the reason? The bulb might be fused off. That means the filament of the bulb sometimes gets burnt because of high voltage, because of physical damage. If the filament is fused, that means if it is burnt, then there is no bulb glowing, okay? So here we have to notice one point that when a circuit is closed, only then the flow of electric charges takes place. The electric charges, they cannot travel in an electric path unless until it is closed. So this is a electric circuit. So we can make the circuit so simple, not even this complicated. So somebody get a doubt, can we make the circuit without this wire, this conductor? Yes, of course. You can take a cell, the positive and negative terminal, you can fix a wire. So now you are, you are attaching the wire to one terminal of the bulb here. So here you have arranged, fixed the wire from the negative terminal of the cell to one terminal of the bulb. Now the other terminal of the bulb can be directly connected to the positive terminal of the cell then only the bulb glow, then also the bulb glows. Because anyway, you have to connect the two terminals of the cell to the two terminals of the bulb, then the bulb glows, then the circuit is complete. Okay, right. Sometimes in our houses, you see that the circuits are made, but all the time the lights do not glow. Daytime do the lights glow? No. Why? Because you will switch off. So in a circuit, they will put one more component called as 
स्विच सो इफ यू ऑफ द स्विच इट विल ब्रेक द सर्क्यूट नो फ्लो ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिसिटी इफ यू ऑन द स्विच द सर्क्यूट इज क्लोज सो एन इलेक्ट्रिक सर्क्यूट कैन बी ऑफ टू टाइप्स वन इज ओपन सर्क्यूट क्लोज सर्क्यूट दिस ओपन सर्क्यूट इज ऑल्सो इट ऑल्सो कैन बी कॉल्ड एज ब्रोकन सर्क्यूट द सर्क्यूट इज ब्रोकन Once the circuit is broken, there is no flow of electricity. Once the circuit is closed, then there is flow of electricity. So that is what we do with the switches all the time. If you switch on, you are completing the circuit, you are closing the circuit, then the electricity passes. Then the fan runs, light glows, TV ons. If you switch off, you are breaking the circuit. So by that the supply or the flow of electric charges stop. So by that the device is stopped. So we discussed the importance of switch. we understood what is a switch how is it useful so it is used to open and break the circuit it is used to close the circuit it is used to break the circuit so by that we can operate the electrical devices or appliances but how can we make one switch i already told you that we cannot experiment with the bigger switches the switchboards in your house because that deals with 240 volts of electricity which is very dangerous and fatal so what you can do you can work with a simple source of electricity like a cell with 1.5 volts electricity now at your level how you can make your own switch and how you can test the working of a switch functioning of a switch let's see here you can take a cell just as like in the previous activity a 1.5 volt cell you can pull one wire out of that you can attach one wire with the help of a rubber band or electric insulation tape and you can attach this to the bulb as we did in the previous case so now from the other terminal of the bulb we have drawn one wire and from the negative terminal of the battery also we drew we got one more wire so these two wires are not connected the circuit is broken no flow of electricity here we are taking a small wooden wooden block and we are taking two pins brass pins you will get the pins in the stationery shop which are used to fix the chart to the notice board pegs also called as pegs right so such pins you have taken now to one of the pin you have fixed one safety pin you know what is the safety pin so safety pin is fixed to this pin now how the safety pin is the safety pin is not attached to the second pin here so you connected one wire to the pin a and this is the pin b so in between what is there safety pin is there so the safety pin you can adjust you can move if you contact the safety pin from pin b to a then the circuit is closed the electricity it flows so this electricity it flows through this and it comes to the battery that means you have made your own switch with the help of a safety pin and two notice board pins right so you can any time you can connect this when you connect this you are closing the circuit the electricity flows the bulb glows and when you take it away then the circuit is broken the flow of the electricity stops so by this way you can make your own switch and you can make your own circuits by using a cell and by using a small bulb and wires and the safety pins you can arrange a switch also in your circuit so now let us see another important topic of electricity that is all about the materials that are used to conduct the electricity so the materials that can conduct the electricity that means that allow the electricity to pass or flow through them those are conductors if any material if it is allowing the electricity to pass through it it's a conductor if a material it's not allowing the electricity to pass through it it's an insulator there are advantages of both the materials okay so in electricity in electrical appliances 
in the applications of electricity both materials are important conductors are important as well as insulators are also important now let's see what is a conductor what is a non conductor with the help of a simple activity here we have a setup of a cell and a battery you know that this is a closed circuit but here you see that between the two pins there is nothing connecting the bottom one is a wooden block okay anyway i'll remove this part also for more clarity now you see here we have some two pins so now you see the circuit is broken it's not closed circuit so there is no flow of electric charges right so here we are given some items to complete this circuit so by that the electricity it flows right so this is open circuit if you keep something here and close the circuit then the electricity should flow now i took the key i kept the key over here key you know the key i kept a key so the key is touching both the pins now the bulb glows the circuit is complete the electricity it flows through the key the charge which is which is coming from here through this wire it is flowing through the key so key is a conductor it is conducting the electricity now the second one we take the eraser so you kept the eraser here so then that bulb does not glow it does not allow the electricity to pass through it so eraser is not a conductor match stick if you keep match stick check it out no keep a glass bangle a piece of glass bangle no if you keep iron nail yes so why all this is happening because key is made out of metal eraser is made up of rubber match stick is made up of wood glass bangle is made up of glass iron nail is made up of metal iron so only here the test is passed by the metals that means metals are good conductors of electricity what are not good conductors what are not the conductors rubber wood glass so these are called as insulators the materials that do not conduct the electricity that do not allow the electric charge to pass through them are called insulators the materials that allow the electric charge to pass through them or conductors so hope you find the difference between a conductor and an insulator here you are given only five materials but you will be finding so many things in your home you can use your you can take your pencil you can take the comb you can bring so many items some 20 items so you make this circuit at home and check with each and every material which is a conductor and which is a non conductor but by sur surprising you finally you will get the fact that only the metals they conduct the electricity rubber wood glass plastic if you use a comb the one which you used to comb your hair if you place the comb it doesn't that is made up of plastic so these materials they do not conduct the electricity those are insulators right so this is all about the electric conductors and insulators so we have seen what are conductors and what are insulators now let us see some of the applications of conductors and insulators i already told you that both of them conductors as well as insulators they have their own advantages in the field of electricity in the application of electricity conductors they are used to make electric wires that is to conduct the electricity and electric by electronic components and heating devices so electric devices heating devices electronic components electronic and electrical components wire electrical wire the wire which conduct the electricity so when a building is constructed a wiring is done so by that the switches lights fans everything are fixed there 
so for that wiring we use a better conductor but here if a conductor is used to make the things the electricity may get exposed and somebody if they put their hand they may get electric shock see here this is an copper wire so the copper wire is used to connect two points that is this is the source and this is the device so if the copper wire is not having any cover suppose accidentally somebody touches it or if it comes in contact with another wire there is a chance of short circuit there is a chance of electric shock so the wires that we use in our house they are all insulated so this copper wire will be covered by some insulating material so that is the application of insulators so what are the insulators the major insulator is plastic so plastic is used extensively as an insulator and some places ceramic is used ceramic or glass is used sometimes the electricians when they are working out they wear the rubber gloves rubber gloves rubber is an insulator it prevents the shock so rubber so these are the applications of conductors and insulators